And you know, I have Stapio Marcus J. Thank you so much for staying with us and being part of the show. Get down with us tonight. Call us at 804-402-2893. It's my birthday, y'all. So definitely excited to uh, be giving you Ain't you No know, Have Step with Marcus J. Live from the Den and Mix Law on my birthday show. I want to take this opportunity to introduce some guests that are joining us uh, here on the show. Joining me as she does monthly for the Diva Diaries. We got the Dana Pool Diva. In the building with us tonight. What's going on, girl? Happy birthday. Thank you very much. I appreciate Hope it. Hope you're having a great day. I am. So far, so good. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, also joining me uh, for the show tonight, we got Miss Tony joining me in the building. What's going on, girl? Hello and happy birthday. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, I want to jump right into it. Uh, you know, we had K-Dub in the last segment. We appreciate uh, him being here uh, but what I want to do is kind of move on and kind of get into the next segment. And this next segment that we like to call What the Hell. This segment we say What the Hell is because we have situations uh, that come up and they really make you kind of shake your head and say, What? What the hell? Uh, this first one comes from yourblackworld.com. Uh, it's about a young man who down in Florida. Uh, was on the beach and he was playing with his homeboy uh, you guys may have seen this one on my Facebook wall or you may have seen this one uh, just kind of monitoring the internet but the guy was on the beach and he was playing with his friend and it was kind of rough housing a little bit uh, and he was out there playing with his puppy he had a little pit bull puppy that he was playing with uh, and I guess his behavior attracted the attention of the police in the area and those police came up on him and they said, hey, yo, come here, yo. And the young fella didn't respond to him. You know, he's just like, you know, what y'all want, you know. And they ran up on him and they accosted him. And not only did they accost him, but they threw him down to the ground. They were upset because he was giving them, quote, menacing looks. 14-year-old boy. So... I, I want to kind of set it up like that and kind of get what you guys' thoughts are. Now, there are some folks that will say that you need to show ultimate respect to the police. So regardless of what your feelings are, you need to respond to them and, you know, kind of succumb to whatever their questioning is. But I, I have some opinions about how this went. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of start with you, Dating Pool Diva. What's your thoughts on the fact that this young blood uh, was kind of... He was hanging out with his homies on the beach, playing with his puppy. The police said, hey, you. And he didn't respond to the police, so they ran up on him. What's your thoughts? Of course, I think that that is wrong. It's an invasion, you know, of privacy and I'm sure some amendment laws. Um, I just don't think it was right to, you know, accost him that way. Um, I do think that a lot of black folks are just brought up to, to believe you need to fear the police. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to do what they tell you to do or else, you know, whatever could happen to you, you can get shot a bunch of times. So, you know, maybe he could have avoided some of what happened and I really don't know the outcome. Um, I had heard of a similar case of a boy being shot 26 times. This isn't the same case, right? No, no, okay. no, no. I know that story. I, I, that story, I believe, is a New York story. This is a 14-year-old boy, Tremaine McMillan, uh, who was feeding his puppy. Again, as I mentioned, playing on the beach with the homies. The cops came up on him. They wanted ATV. They asked him what he was doing. He was playing rough with the homies. Uh, the cops said it was inappropriate behavior. Uh, they asked him where his mom's was. He just walked away. He was like, I ain't fooling with y'all. He just walked away. Uh, and they didn't like that. They chased after him. Um, and at that point, the cop jumped off the ATV, pinned the kid down, and arrested him. And they're saying that he pulled his arm away. And he said something to the effect, man, don't be touching me, you know. And they arrested him for resisting arrest and all of these types of things, Tony. So I'm going to get your thoughts on, on that. There's more to it. We'll kind of flesh it out a little bit more as we kind of get into the story. But your initial thoughts on what we've said so far. Um, I do agree with um, Charisma as far as, you know, we are kind of raised to fear the police and you do whatever they say as soon as they say it. Um, but... I, I don't agree with this young man walking away from the police. I mean, one, they are, you know, 
they're the police, they are an authoritative figure and adults, mind you. So I wouldn't necessarily agree with him just walking away, you know, ignoring them. But I do feel that their actions were ex excessive to say the least, that that was totally unnecessary. I'm looking at this and, and you know, it, it just, it, it seems odd. You know, the young man is quoted as saying, I don't like it, I feel sad. He got in front of me on the ATC. Uh, he slammed my hand and he started choking me. Then my six, six week old pit bull named Polo got hurt, bruised his front paw when the police grabbed me and slammed me to the ground. It makes me feel sad. Miami Dade is where this was, Charisma. Um, okay. He said that the uh, detective, of course, says that they use force because the 14 year old had, quote, clenched fists. Uh, but the boy is asking how his fist could have been clenched if he was holding his puppy. Uh, the officer went on to say, of course, we have to neutralize a threat in front of us. And when you have someone that is being resistant, somebody who is pulling away from you, somebody that's clenching their fist, somebody that's flaring their arms, that's an immediate threat. And the boy's mom, of course, saw the incident uh, and she disagreed with it. She told him, that's my boy. That's my boy. Now, I, I, my thought is this. We live in a country. We live in a culture where people are afraid of young black males. A lot of it has to do with their own uh, their own behavior, you know. So I'm certainly not absolving them from or us uh, from you know responsibility here. However, if you have people in authority who are predisposed to think that young black males are immediately up to no good, that is what leads to situations like this. If you see two young guys roughhousing, basically playing. And you observe this from a distance. And as you will happen upon them and you see them come away from each other with a smile or laugh and ah, you got me, which is how that goes, because I've been the victim, not a victim, but I've been a party to these type of roughhousing situations. Would it not be appropriate for you as a police officer to, as you happen upon them, see that they just chilling and just let it go, walk away? Do you really need to get in the middle of that? And you see this kid, by the time you get to him, by listening to this article, I mean, you saw them roughhousing, but by the time you got to him, he was playing with his puppy, Charisma. Right. So he's playing with a puppy. I don't know too many people that are menacing playing with a puppy. What's your thoughts? Okay, devil's advocate. Could this side of the story not be the only side? You know, maybe it was another way it was viewed you know, the way the little boy was saying that it went down, it may not have went down exactly the way, you know, that he said it. And so we don't really know, we weren't there, we don't know whose side of the story, but I'm sure the police had a whole separate story from what the 14 year old boy had. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, but let's, let's, let's take the situation that we have mm -hmm. and let's apply the devil's advocate that we think right. that we can apply. As the devil's advocate, let's say that well, you, you, you brought it up. Tell me how the devil's advocate goes, and let's break it down. What well, do I mean, just looking at it from another standpoint, you know, it, it may not be the way it appears in the article. You know, it all depends on who interviewed and who said what. And, you know, yeah, we're empathetic, sympathetic for the little boy who was accosted by the police, but we don't really know how threatening he may have actually been or how the, the fight actually looked. Right. They say it was rough housing, but it may have looked like a real fight right. to them on the outside. I don't know. Tony, what do you think? I agree. And I mean, especially down in that area where, you know, there is such a high rate of violence involving young black males. You know, the police are, you know, of course, on heightened alert whenever they see something that they feel might be, you know, it might potentially lead to something where someone actually gets hurt, you know, or, um, you know, something more than just playing around with your friends. Um, but I think it, you mentioned that the boy's mother actually saw what happened. Yeah, she was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and, and, and for him to use words like I was sad, like that's that's a child. That's not a man who is, you know, menacing and, you know, threatening. And, you know, these officers feel like they needed to draw their weapons. That's that's a child who was out there having fun, you know, and kind of it displays that in just the words that he used to describe how that incident affected him. So right. I don't I don't think that, that what they did was necessary at all. I can also tell you from personal experience that young black males uh, have a natural distrust for law enforcement. Right. Because we, we, not they, we 
you know, feel as though we are guilty in their eyes without actually having all of the information. Absolutely. So you got to consider the fact that this young man may have had that on his mind. Now, I was raised in a household where I was taught to respect authority and police and the uniform and the badge and all of that kind of stuff. But, you know, Pops Jay and Moms Jay could give me all of that. But at the end of the day, I was a product of what I saw outside the household. And I was given, you know, the gems and jewels from Pops. But when I went outside, my experience with the police was different. Now, I wasn't a kid that got in trouble. You know, I wasn't a kid that had direct interactions with police, but for, you know, minor traffic situations. But if I'm putting myself in this kid's situation, he's 14 years old. He lives in Miami, Dade. You know, I don't know enough about that area to speak to the actual neighborhood that he's from. But I would guess that he's seen police do some stuff that is questionable. So when they happen upon him, when he knows he ain't done nothing wrong, I don't know that I had that much of a problem him saying, look, man, leave me alone. You know, what do you want? What do you want with me? You know, and the fact that they accost this boy while he's clenching a puppy. I mean, that to me is that is questionable behavior. And I don't know that I'm going to give the police the benefit of the doubt on every situation because every situation doesn't have a guilty young black male. And I think a lot of times we assume that because the police are involved that the young black male is guilty. And that, and that's and that's not always and that's not always the case. So uh we'll leave that one there. I just wanted to kind of get that out a little bit because that was a situation that I noticed was kind of making its way around uh around Facebook. I got that article from the uh website called yourblackworld.com. Uh, this next one is also from young, uh, youngblackworld.com, your black world, I'm sorry, yourblackworld.net, yourblackworld.net. Uh, before I actually get into it, I'm actually showing uh, the ladies the picture of this fella, uh, and uh, I'll read the byline to the listeners right now. Basically, <laughs> Tony's having a laugh right now. Basically, you got a brother who's sentenced to 50 years in prison. 50 years, 5 0, y'all. 50 years in prison for stealing ribs. <laughs> now, of course, you know, the clown in me, the first thing I think of is like Chris Rock from what was it, New, was it New Jack City or I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, one of them, one of the movies. He's like, you know, let me get one rib, you know, what, whatever movie that was. I think if you're I'll listening, you, you know the movie. Okay, I'm gonna get you sucker. But. This is real serious business. 50, uh, 50 years for stealing the ribs. Willie Smith wore to Waco, Texas, was sentenced to 50 years for tucking a rack of ribs under his shirt inside a local grocery in September of 2011. The jurors in the 19th State District Court were less than impressed with the 43-year-old's previous five felony pre, uh, convictions for burglary, attempted robbery, a- aggravated assault, leaving the scene of an accident and possession of cocaine and four misdemeanor convictions the jury recommended that ward be sentenced to 50 years in prison because he is an habitual criminal now get this y'all the jury took two minutes two 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 minutes 60 seconds times two 120 seconds last week to convict him on the robbery charge Uh, and about an hour to decide his punishment. His conviction for stealing $35 in ribs was considered robbery after he threatened a store employee who followed him to the parking lot and interrogated him about the bulge in his shirt. The employee testified that he asked Ward what was under his shirt and the slab of ribs fell to the ground. (laughs) He asked Ward what else he was hiding and Ward said, quote, I got a knife. Uh, end quote. And the employee added that Ward further threatened him by stating, quote, if you don't leave me alone, I'll show you what I got. And at that point, Ward just ran off. So there's more to to it. But I think we've kind of uh, we kind of said enough. Uh, Tony, I'm going to come to you first on this one. And I'm going to kind of go through this. There's more to the article and I'll look to see if it's relevant to this case here. But um, we understand and I'll kind of set it up to you in question form. We understand that Mr. Ward is not a, uh, shall we say, uh, model Model citizen. citizen. He's not a model citizen. He's got a lot of felony convictions. He's got a lot of misdemeanor convictions. Uh, But at the end of the day, what got him 50 years 
we're stealing 35 and it don't matter it's funny you know culturally you know we as you know black folk i'm 39 today y'all it's my birthday so 30 something black folk it's funny when we think of ribs you know what i'm saying like anytime ribs is involved it don't even matter the context it's just funny when you say ah craig was stealing ribs or craig was over there eating ribs. anytime you throw ribs in it it's kind of funny but this dude is about to spend at 43 he ain't getting out till he 93 years old y'all and when they ask him yo man what you in here for yo yo i'm in here for stealing ribs like for real come on tony seriously yeah. we understand he's a habitual offender He's not a model citizen. 50 years for stealing ribs. Come on now. I mean, I think that is just asinine. But look at his criminal history. Well, of course, he was convicted based on his history. But honestly, you know, he probably is going to end up back in jail anyway. So whether they got him on stealing ribs or stealing cars, <laughs> he was he was probably destined to go back to the big house. That's uh, S.Y. Butler is hitting us up on the MixLR page. What up, girl? Appreciate the love you're giving us. Uh, and thank you for the happy birthday salutation. She like, nah, he can't even eat the ribs. <laughs> uh, and, and author Desiree Monique was hitting us up earlier. She's enjoying the Bob Molly music uh, that we've been playing here tonight. So, uh, And she uh, also is saying that the story is a little bit crazy. So charisma, the dude about to go to jail for basically what will end up being the rest of his damn life. And are they we, we, serious like for this real? is a real story okay <laughs> this ain't nothing i just made up you know quote the, ver the verdict shows that the citizens of this county will not tolerate continued disrespect and disregard for other people and their property said assistant district attorney jr visha who prosecuted ward with chris bullijan quote people who choose to do so will be dealt with seriously and appropriately ward sentence and convictions come just months after the u.s sentencing commission released a report revealing that black men receive sentences that are a whopping 19.5 percent longer than white men found guilty for similar crimes between december of 7 and september of 11. now for those people who think that we as black folk be screaming nonsense about how y'all treat us different in the court system than they treat everybody else no one is saying mr ward is innocent and I don't think anybody would have a problem with him going to jail for a long time. A long time. I'm okay with it when you consider his prior convictions for robbery and aggravated assault and just basically being an ass to the community. But ultimately, when you consider that he about to go to jail for 50 years and when he's going to jail for 50 years, his final crime has sent him up the river for basically, I mean, we can joke about 93 years old. Who, who lives in 93 and who lives in 93 in jail? So at the end of the day, this dude about to go to jail for the rest of his life. And his final crime, Tony, was he ain't asked for one rib. <laughs> he asked for a slab. Matter of fact, he ain't asked. He, he just took, took it. it. Right. So I just got a problem with that. I mean, I think y'all do, too. And I just wanted to kind of round table it. You know, I'm the only black male in the room right now. We're void of the other fellas. But this is just a little off for me. I mean, am I tripping, ladies? Am I tripping? No, you're not tripping. I just want to know, like, does he have any chance of parole or anything? I mean, are y'all serious 50 years for ribs? I mean, it couldn't have been one of the other things he did in the past that hit him for 50 years? You wait till he steals some ribs? I don't know. I mean, I've been looking at the rest of the article. It's saying that in Texas's neighboring state of Oklahoma, a 17-year-old white boy decided to consume some, al some alcohol and drive home. We know what that's called. We know what that charge is. Uh, ultimately, he, he struck a tree, killed his 16-year-old passenger uh, and best friend. The judge sentenced him to 10 years of church every Sunday for his DUI manslaughter conviction. And this will not be the outcome for Josh Brent, who was the Dallas Cowboy player, uh, who killed his teammate in a car crash under the influence, nor will be for any other young black male under the influence. This one white boy got 10 years of church. Other people going to jail. Again, we not just screaming to be screaming here, y'all. This is real court sentences and things like that. And I think that it, it warrants a discussion, you know, because if we're not talking about it, it's going to continue to happen. 
And no one thinks, again, that Mr. Ward is someone who should walk free. He's not a good person. He's a bad person. He does a lot of terrible things. He got a lot of felony convictions. We need him off the street. But I don't know that you take this man's life away 50 years when his final crime, and we get that he's habitual. We get that. We get the three strikes. We get all of that. 50 years, and ultimately, he stole $35 worth of product, regardless of what that. It's not even grand theft, y'all. It wasn't even grand theft, Tony. I mean, I see you over there, you know, you look like you want to say something. I mean, give yeah, me something here. I mean, it just frustrates me because, yeah, it was only $35 worth of ribs. But, you know, you just get tired of people just doing bad things, making bad decisions over and over again and having all these opportunities to come back into the community and try to do the right thing. And they don't do that. You have people who work hard every day, you know, struggling just to get by, you know, but we don't break the law, you know, we can live a pretty happy life. And yeah, 50 years is excessive, I think, for somebody stealing $35 worth of ribs. But again, in this situation, he's probably going to end up back in jail anyway. So he's off the streets. If this is what got him there, you know, then that's what got him there. But I just I'm tired of people who, you know, continually try to buck the system and get away. I just don't even know what else to say. I mean, I'm speechless. <laughs> but you That's know, crazy. But you know what's funny about it? You know, we, we again, I, you know, I set it up by joking about how we all joke about ribs. But at the end of the day, yo, the dude stole some ribs, man. All right, we're, we're done with and that. And I think that the community should be outraged. Just the fact of what you said is excessive. And it keeps happening to our black people. You know, like white guy kills someone goes to church for 10 years i mean for some people that's like jail but it's really not you get out in two hours so i mean i just, i just don't understand yeah yeah ain't no ass stepping ain't no ass stepping with marcus j live from the dan legacy internet radio.com xlr we appreciate everybody that's listening to us on my birthday y'all i'm 39 and i'm excited about my birthday so we appreciate everybody that's with us call us up if you want to wish me Happy birthday at 804-402-2893 is the number to dial to be down with us. Uh, I got another story here uh, for what the hell. And uh, my Christian uh, brothers and sisters would be very interested to hear this one. This one is about an Australian man. Now, I got this article uh, from the uh, Christian uh, World website, ChristianPost.com, ChristianPost.com. Uh, an Australian man claims to be the reincarnation of Jesus Christ and he recalls the crucifixion. He remembers. He remembers when his ass was up there on that cross. <laughs> yeah, I said it crashed in North Florida. I don't care about that. But anyway, here's the thing. He is, is, is really kind of bugging out about it. And he says, when you are one with God and you are not in a state of fear and you have quite good control of your body sensations and the level of pain that you absorb from your body. This is what he says. Alan John Miller, who is a 50 year old uh, ex software professional from Queensland, uh, which is a uh, large city in uh, Australia. Uh, he says that he has very clear memories of the crucifixion, but it wasn't as harrowing for me as it was for others like Mary, who was present. <laughs> uh, the Australian said that the memories of his supposed life of Jesus includes performing miracles such as resurrecting people from the dead, including, quote, a friend of mine, Lazarus, who most people know is mentioned in the Bible. Uh <laughs> I don't even know how else you continue to set this up. Just a little over 2,000 years ago, we arrived on earth for the first time, he says. Uh, my name then was Yahshua ben Joseph, or the Jesus of the Bible, the son of Joseph and Mary. Mary's name then was Mary of Magdala, the woman identified in the Bible as Mary Magdalene. Mary was my wife then, and the first person I appeared to after I was crucified. He claims on his website saying that he began, quote, remembering the details of his life on earth as Jesus after going through a divorce in 1997. <laughs> Let me finish. <laughs> Let me finish. Miller goes on to explain that from the first until the 21st century, uh, to the 20th century, he has, quote, led from the heavens in a mission to discover more spiritual truth, 
which was, quote, fueled by my personal desire and passion to become even closer to God. My first question to him is, if you was in the heavens, why the hell you wasn't talking to God while you was there? You were there too, right? What's up with that? So anyway, uh, I would like for my Christian brothers and sisters and my Muslim brothers and sisters and my Jewish brothers and sisters primarily, you know, because those are considered the big three. Just pretty much anyone who believes in deity, uh, I, I would like for you, and, and we'll t- we'll take your call or we'll take your quote long after we are done with this particular. Because I'm a roundtable this here with the sisters here, Tony and Charisma. Because um, you know anybody that knows me as an agnostic, you know I got some comments on this one. But it's just very interesting to hear someone actually go there. So Tony, I'll start with you. Uh, do you feel comfortable sharing with the listeners what your uh, religious you know, just in a in a in a real quick religious belief system is. Do you do you feel comfortable sharing? Yes, I'm a Baptist Christian. Okay. Um, what in the hell? <laughs> First, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. You can say hell. You can say hell. Damn it, I can say more. It's, it's our show, and we ain't governed by the FCC. So if we want to drop them real nasty words, we could. Oh, we don't. We'll stick with it. We don't. But we could. What the hell is the name of this segment? Tony, what the hell is up with this dude? For real, yo. Okay, so he's, what, 50, you said? He's 50. But he just... He, he know, just realized after he went through this divorce. So, so let's do some math here, okay? In 2013, if you're 50 now, how old were you in 1997? That was, what, 16 years ago? Something like that, right? So 34. Mid-30s. Mm-hmm. Early, you know, south of 35, north of 30. So somewhere in that range when he got divorced... He was like, you know what? I'm Jesus Christ. And I remember the crucifixion. I remember when they had me up on that cross. It ain't really hurt as bad as it for me as it did for other people. I was married to Mary. I used to live in heaven until recently, until I came back. I mean, you know, I, I like to sometimes put it in very, very simple terms to let people know how freaking crazy you sound when you say this stuff. So, Tony, pick it up. Why is he not institutionalized? That is absolutely ridiculous. Like, what have you been doing, like, all this time? So when he realized who he was, like, what what happened after that? Did he start ministering to people? Is he now healing people? Or... I, w- I would think we would have heard something like a miracle has occurred or whatever like that. I mean, I think you got... It right on the button. I mean, he's a crackpot. He probably went crazy after the divorce. Yes. And now he thinks he's Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it's as simple as that. Like, he, he lost it. It was a traumatic time. For some people, divorce, death, things like that True. Can, can cause psychosis to occur. I've actually had that happen in my family before. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you lose it because you know, something traumatic happens, and he really does believe he's Jesus, I'm sure. Well, right. That's what I was saying. So it's like he's having this psychotic break. And, I mean, if if you are Jesus, like, that's my first question is, like, what are you going to do if you're Jesus? What So what's going to happen? Like, help us help to, the world. Yeah, do something for the world. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That so, is crazy. I mean, so, Wow. So he's he's Jesus and he talks about I guess the crucifixion. So is he now the resurrected Jesus or is he like who is is he the deity or is he the the man son of his, his, God? Here's what, what my is question he? is. Here's what my first question, question is. And before I get too too far into it, what I want to do uh, is introduce someone that's joining us now. Uh, in studio back uh, we haven't seen him in a couple of weeks because we were uh, last week a greatest hits we got Carlton Banks joining us here uh, in studio we appreciate it Carlton Banks what's up my brother yeah I'm good I'm sorry my bad <laughs> yeah. Anyway. You you excited to be here, ain't you? Man, I had a great ass weekend. Right. I, I'll tip the curse. Uh, I'll put in the money and tip drop that one. All right. Well. All right. Well. We'll 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 come back to that. But here's what we're talking about in a second. Uh, you've got an Australian man, and we know we, you just joined us, so I'm not going to take a whole lot of time to set it up. I'm gonna just give it to you basic. Give me your initial thought on what I give to you basic, and then we're gonna round table it with the ladies. You've got a Australian man who 
says that he is Jesus Christ reincarnated. Uh, he says he's 50 years old. He says that once he went through uh, a divorce in 1997, he realized that he was Jesus Christ and re reincarnated. Uh, he remembers going and performing miracles. He remembers being married to Mary Magdalene. Uh, and he also remembers the crucifixion. And he says that since 2000, since, you know, we know Jesus uh, was at the beginning of time with as we know it. So, you know, from the first century to the present. So in that time frame, he had been. Damn it. I, I, I got to be crashed. y'all. He was chilling in heaven, but he don't remember talking to God. So he wants to be close to God now. I, I, I'm sorry. I try to take the high road. Y'all Y'all giving me the face, but I, I can't take the high road with this nonsense. Call, call Banks. Now that it's been set up for you like that, why don't you tell me what your thoughts is, bro? He ain't first off the wall not to say that Jesus Christ. So what's his, what's his claim to fame? Why are he catching you know, his 15 minutes of fame? That's what it is for you? Yeah, I mean, for real. He ain't the first one. How many, how many bums you've been on the street say, I'm Jesus Christ? Yeah, yeah. I no, mean, really. I, I got you. I mean, this comes from uh, ChristianPost.com, which... Uh, is a reputable Christian website. Uh, so my, my my guess my guess is they would not put this story out, not necessarily credibility wise, but they wouldn't put this story out if they didn't feel that it was necessary. Now here's my question, because y'all know how we are, black people. Black people, we know how we are. If somebody told y'all that they had the lottery number or the lottery ticket in their pocket, you wouldn't believe them. If somebody told y'all that they had a get rich quick scheme, even though they was driving up in a Jaguar, y'all wouldn't believe them. If somebody told y'all that they had millions of dollars and you was talking to them from outside their million dollar home, you would still look at them with the rock raised eyebrow. So my question to you is this. You got this freaky little white boy that's telling you that he is Jesus Christ incarnated. Black people. We know Christianity wise, one of the things that Christians believe is that Jesus Christ will come back. Uh, and you, you hear all this in Revelations. Who amongst us would be willing to say that they are ready to believe that whoever this person is, is Jesus? Because, I mean, this is what they teach in, 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 in Tony. Talk to me here. Right. This is what we That's teach right. in, Reve in Revelations. Mm -hmm. We teach that Jesus will come back, right? Would you believe a dude if he told you he was Jesus? Like, what would you what would you need? Like, would you need him to give you the lot on numbers today and them jokes come out tomorrow? Absolutely not. <laughs> you know, Absolutely like, not. Like, 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 what would you need? I mean, now, because I brought this up, this Australian fella is the springboard to this conversation, mm -hmm. but the reality is, how the hell are we going to know for real? Like, do we really need to see the end of days? I mean, because I'm pretty sure that people in Oklahoma think that it's pretty damn close to the end of days right now. Well, right. A lot, a lot of people and do. And the people in my home state of New Jersey probably felt that way a few months ago with Sandy. And I'm pretty sure the people in New Orleans felt that way a couple years ago with Katrina. And I'm pretty sure the people in New York City felt that way on September 11th. So... How the hell are we gonna know for real? My thing is, of course, you know that yes, there's supposed to be there's the rapture um, that will come when Jesus returns. But this dude has he realized in 1997 that he was actually Jesus. So what have you been doing for the past 16 years? While you know, since you realized who you were, because Jesus would have you know he would have been doing things that we would have heard about him before now. Um, I just again I, I would know I, I, I know I would know if it was Jesus this dude not buying not, you know, the, the, the facts that the, the fact that you question it first of all his whole you know well it didn't really hurt you know it wasn't so bad for me like it's just that's nonsense like he there's the lack of the actual spirituality and the connection with God that's there charisma what's your thoughts on it well, I was saying earlier that I think something is mentally wrong with him, and he may actually believe that he is Jesus Christ. But, I mean, I guess we were always taught, you know, as a Christian, that when he comes back, it's going to be dramatic. You know, I'm like coming out the sky type of thing. Not, okay, you've been living on earth for all these years, and all of a sudden you get a divorce, and now you're Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? No, I got you. Like, people would be flocked to you. Like in the Bible. Call Max. He got a following. 
uh, people who on that website. That's his following. I mean, somebody, somebody, you can. What, who was it? Abraham Lincoln? You fool me, fool some of the people some of the time. Yeah, you know that's what it is. First of all, unless he can put his finger in some water and turn into wine, I can't holler at my man. All right, that's 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 pretty much what I'm saying. If he cannot perform any miracles, then where's his credibility? He says he's a reincarnation. Okay, dude, you know what? I'm a I'm a non-believer. Period. Yeah, yeah. prove I me ju- right. I just think that it's uh, very very comical and interesting because. You know, Jesus is the person now, but, you know, in our culture, you know, in the culture of Christians. uh, But I'm sure that there was probably someone that said that they were the reincarnation of Buddha or the reincarnation of Muhammad or the reincarnation of Abraham. You know, whatever, you know, the deity or prophet. And I know Christians don't believe Jesus was a prophet. You know, I'm not a Christian and I think he was a prophet. So, you know, it it, it, kind of is what it is. But I just thought that it was interesting to bring up because. You know, I wanted to ask the question because we know what Revelation says. If you were to follow the basic instructions before leaving Earth, the Revelation says that when that time comes, you know, he will reveal himself. So my question is, you know how black folk is in 2013. You got plenty of people who walk around charisma and say that we in the end of days now. So how the hell are you going to know? Like, for real, like, I mean, does, does, does Jesus look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo? <laughs> or does Jesus look like Bob Marley? Like, for real. Because white folk think he look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo if you were to go by that picture that most of us grew up seeing in, 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 in our churches. You know, black people worshiping a white Jesus. I got issues with that, but that's a conversation for another day. And then you get the militants who came along. And they put dreads on them and muscles and scars and stuff because they wanted Jesus to look like themselves, right? So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, for all we know, Jesus might be, you know, short with glasses and a baby face. And look like you, right? And look like P. <laughs> <laughs> you know, who knows? Ain't no ass step on Marcus J. Live from the den, y'all. LegacyInternetRadio.com. That's why Butler's cracking up. She thinks we in here, you know, having a great time. It's my birthday, y'all. I'm 39 years old. I feel good. I appreciate everybody that's listening to us. We had a call on our phone. Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't get to the call. If you're still listening, call us back. 804-402-2893. Got one more question in what the hell. And we're going to move on to the Diva Diaries. Um, This one... um, I'm not really sure how uh, I'm going. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to introduce this one, so I'm gonna just go ahead and spit this one out. Um, uh, first thing I'm gonna say is uh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas says that he contracted throat cancer. We know that he had throat cancer, but you know how he said he got throat cancer, y'all. He said that he got throat cancer because he was having oral sex. All right, now, 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 Charisma's waving at me, and she's giving me the face. It, it's been widely reported that his, his, his cancer was caused by having uh, contracted the human papillomavirus, a little, 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 long word, I don't know how to say it. HPV, uh, HPV is the e- abbreviation. He says that he, 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 he got, you know, throat cancer from basically having oral sex with women. That's how he got it. Uh, I'm not sure, but we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take a diversion here because we're getting a call, and I want to bring our caller in. Caller, you on the live line with us? Thank you for calling. Ain't no high step on Marcus J. Caller, what's your name and where you calling from? This is Austin Desiree Monique. I'm calling from Jersey City, New Jersey. What's going? I want to wish. Go ahead. I'm so I'm, I'm with you. Go ahead. I wanted to wish you a happy Earth Strong. Uh, we appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is author Desiree Monique, y'all. She listens to us every single week here. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. She's a very, very supportive listener. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and I appreciate it. Happy Earth Strong for those folks who don't know what that means. It's a Jamaican term. It means happy birthday. Uh, I appreciate it. You want to get in on anything that we're talking about tonight? Oh, no. That's not the last topic. <laughs> yeah, is not it? the last. Is it a little bit crazy for you, huh? Yeah, oh my God. And the other guy thinking he's Jesus. 
<laughs> well, we okay. yeah, we, well, I appreciate you calling. Why don't you tell everybody? I, I know what you got going on. Tell everybody about the book real quick before I let you go. Tell us about the book on Amazon and how we can get the book and the name of it and, and all of that stuff. Okay, um, you can go to Amazon.com. It's under Desiree Monique in books. Um, that would be Life After Death, Remembering Shemuda. That's what it is. Ain't no half-step with Marcus J., author Desiree Monique. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you for the happy earth strong salutation. Uh, keep listening to us. We got some good stuff for the rest of the show. Thank you. You're welcome. You got it. Ain't no how stepping with Marcus J. Um, going back to what we were just talking about with Michael Douglas and the uh, the oral sex thing and human papillomavirus, uh, HPV. Uh, Charisma, you were getting ready to say something about that. Why don't you tell me what your thoughts were on that? Well, I was on Facebook and I saw a link for the whole you know study of throat cancer, you know, being linked to oral sex. Now, I didn't see anything about the Mel Gibson. Is that who we're talking about? Uh, Michael Douglas. Michael Douglas. I didn't see anything about him, but I saw the story about, and I was like freaking out, like, oh my God, you know, because I think uh, quite a few people have had oral sex at least once in their lifetime, Ooh. if not Ooh. more, significantly Ooh. more. I, I, so, I've never done it. I'm, I'm innocent. Of, my mama listening right now. <laughs> the thought of, oh my God, you know, you can get HPV in your throat and you know, get throat cancer. That's pretty scary. That's nasty. Call back. Yeah. Uh, I don't do that kind of stuff. Let's let's. It, 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 you know, Michael Douglas obviously does, uh, and he is saying that when he contracted um, cancer, and we know that he came out in 2010, he is saying uh, he said at the time that it was largely due to drinking and smoking, which we know a lot of people, particularly the brothers, do a lot of drinking and a lot of smoking. I. I drink a lot. I'm sorry. I just do. I like a nice cold glass of beer, and I like a nice warm glass of Crown Royal. That's just how yeah. I roll. Keep it brown. Um, I don't. Yeah, keep it brown. I don't. Uh, I don't smoke, but you know, <clears throat> I do like a nice, nice, you know, you know, intoxicant, as I should say, which is what he said he did. But I also like sex, and the thought of getting sick from having sex, we know, is possible. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, we're True all that. adults here in 2013, but we're usually thinking about intercourse. You know, we're not thinking about oral sex. Calm banks. Again, I'm going to come back to you, and, and, and I'm going to ask you a serious question. When you heard about, you know, you don't have to talk too much about your personal experience. I don't, I don't need that. But we're talking about Michael Douglas here. When you hear a story about a man who contracts cancer, not like a, not an STD, dude. He, he got cancer for cunnilingus. I we mean, hope, that's, we hope it was. Well, that's what he's saying. So, I mean, what's your thoughts when you hear something like that? Well, personally, um, he he doesn't make or float my boat, so I'm not worried about him from that standpoint. Um, you know, I'm sad sad to hear he's got it. Um, however, how you got it versus why you got it are two different things. So, it, I'm 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 not cold. You know me. I. I I'm cold when it comes to that. You cold, you cold, bloody. you know I'm cold. You, you with cold, bloody. That. Ain't, ain't no ass step on Marcus. Yeah, you know it's funny. You know when you hear a story like that because part of me wonders why it's even a story. Like why, why, why yeah, did that's, he, why, yeah, that's why, the biggest thing right there. Why, why did it even come out? Like okay, you 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 know, and I'm like tempering my my language here, trying not to be crass, but I'm thinking like really, like why do we know that that's how you got cancer? Like I mean, we know that you married to Catherine Zeta for a while. So now I'm looking at her with the half raised eyebrow, like, girl, you got the cooties, man. Pretty much. <laughs> there ain't no half step in Marcus J. We're gonna take a break. Uh, and when we come back, we got the Diva Diaries, y'all. We got what we got the Danny Pool Diva in the building to do. Uh, we got a missing child, or we got a word from our sponsor, Marcus J. Ain't no half stepping. It's my birthday, y'all. Call me up, 804-402-2893. I got one call. I'm looking for more. Holla at your boy. Be back in a minute. <laughs> 